All right. We have a great keynote coming up today. Um, I'm going to introduce a guy who has a fantastic name. His name is Bugsy Chu. He is the, that's a great name, right? It's like a, a character in a movie. But he is the business development manager for Hotstat. So Bugsy, come on out and get us started. Welcome to the stage. Hello there. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And like uh, Precious said, my name is Bugsy, business development manager at Hotstat. Without data, you are just another person with an opinion. I guess that's always true. Uh, especially nowadays, data is the key to success. Without data, you can only go so far. It gives you information and insights to uh, achieve your goals and take you where you want to go. Hostess is a profit and loss benchmarking company. We have more than 10,000 hotels, plus uh, 400 data providers around the world providing us their p &L data in a monthly basis. On top of that, um, our data covers 500 K, uh, more than 500 KPIs, and along with our three main products, internal benchmarking, external benchmarking, and market reports. So w no matter if you are trying to compare to your competitors, know uh, about more th uh, th about the market that you want to enter, or something about uh, internal uh, comparison, we got, you, we got you covered. So also, it doesn't matter if you are a hotel owner, uh, asset manager, developer invest investors, all this report can give you the information that you need to achieve your goals. With Hotstats, you can compare data with your competitors uh, to identify the, the opportunities for your uh, properties, um, share all this insight with your team so that you guys all can all be on the same page, as well as to uh, set astute goals and strategies to uh, bring your properties to a higher level, make more profit, and that's the, that's the main point for Hotstats, make profit, not only how much revenue you, you're making, you also want to know how much money you're actually keeping, and that's the main goal. And that's actually a homework for every um, uh, hotelers. Um, you, can use our, you can use our products, our reports to do uh, various stuff. You can man, uh, manage the ROI, uh, cost control, revenue management, etc. So because with uh, our, ex our external benchmarking, you can compare all your data with your competitors and know exactly where you're at. And that's, I would say, very important in the era of data. So next, I will hand over the floor to our global head of customer success, Tanya Venegas. Oh. Thank you, Bugsy. Um, I wanted Bugsy to come up and give a brief introduction of Hotstats so you know where we're getting the data and the information that I'm presenting today. So now I'm going to go into current trends in the hospitality industry. We're going to start at the top at the global level and see how everything's going there, dive into the US and look at some luxury and resort um, numbers in there. All of our data is collected on a monthly basis. So the latest data that we have is through October 2022. So first, um, we're still talking about that recovery chart. Um, on this one, we're looking at a month-to-month -month index versus 2019, and we're looking at GOP per available room. And this is the major markets around the world. So you can see Middle East is up there at the top at 38%. Um, they were lagging for a long time, but with some of the events and things that have come up in this past year, it's really bolstered the market there. You have Europe at a positive 9%. Again, they are... Um, outperforming 2019 levels, and a lot of that is because of cost saving and measurements that they've been able to put in place there. The US is still lagging slightly at a minus 1%, and then as expected, uh, Asia Pacific is still lagging at minus 46%, but that's mainly because they haven't been open. Now everything's starting to open back up, and we'll see that trend increase. I believe um, we were having some discussions last night that China is the only place that's not open back up. Uh, I have a team member that works with me from Taiwan, and she finally got to go back home and travel back home, and all the restrictions have been um, lifted there. So on this slide, again, we're looking at the recovery graph, but we're honing in on the United States and the numbers there. We're looking again at a month-to-month -month index as compared to 2019 and looking at revenue per available room. So when we look at rooms, we're at 1% above what we were in 2019. F&B also is at 1% above of 2019 levels. 
Conference and banqueting, as expected, we're still a little bit below there at minus 7%, but we are seeing that trend up and look for those trends to increase in 2023. I, this is a testimony. Everybody's wanting to be back. We're wanting to those face-to-face -face meetings. What we're, all, we're now seeing is business travel just for individual business meetings is still lagging, and we're seeing, hearing a lot of people are still using Zoom, still using... Um, uh, teams to do those meetings, but again, I just don't think that there's any substitute and we'll be getting those numbers back up there. When you look at other revenues, which is the line up there at the top, that's where a lot of properties have been able to tap in and increase revenues over time. So it did, of course, dip off and then you can see the, the trend upwards there and now at 13% and we'll dive into that a little bit further in the next couple of slides of what is bringing those numbers up. And then total revenue per available room, we're right on par at 0%, so equal to 2019 now. So when we're talking about other revenues and what are the trends there, there's a lot of discussion about ancillary revenues. I sat in on a round table yesterday where we were talking about ancillary revenues and what are properties being able to tap into. Uh, first of all, F&B outlets. During COVID, a lot of people, if they were traveling, they were wanting to eat in the property and stay at the property, whereas because a lot of the hotels and resorts were able to gain that confidence from the customers. So they knew that the resorts we're putting measures in place to make it a safe place. So we've seen that trend continue and people continuing to eat at the F&B outlets there. But also being able to capitalize, look at better marketing and how are we marketing our outlets? How are we marketing all of our ancillary revenues to bring up those revenues there? Cancellation and attrition. <laughs> up 91% from 2019, one of those that we expected there, and spa and leisure up 35%. Again, being able to tap into those um, resources and availability that are already there on property, how can we better market and get those customers spending more money in there? And again, this is a percent change per occupied room on this slide. Golf revenues up 62%. Um, my background, I worked in country clubs before, and the, the, the discussion was, is, Nobody's playing golf anymore. How can we get more people into clubs? I know resorts, we were seeing those numbers go down, but as COVID hit, everybody was looking for outdoor activities. So a lot of people turned to golf and that golf trend continues up 62% per occupied room. And then when we look at total revenue per occupied room, it's up 12% when we compare um, 2019 versus 2022. So continuing to look at different slices and dices of the information, here we're looking at the month-to-month -month index for total revenue per available room in the U.S. We took out spa, golf, and beach resorts and looking at the total U.S. average. And you can see, again, the trend for golf resorts up 30% there. We have beach resorts up 6%, again, one of those locations where a lot of people were traveling. And uh, spa resorts, when you look at total revenue per available room, are actually quite down, minus 21%. So when you get that occupancy in there, they're, they're spending money, but tr trying to get those numbers back up there. And then overall average is down minus 2%. And this is another one, just looking at some key markets here, DC, New York City, Miami, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Again, Miami up 43% versus 2019, and the rest are slightly lagging. You've got um, New York at a minus 6%, so they're still down there at the bottom. And again, it's the big cities, DC, New York put in a lot of travel restrictions, so they're still building back up. Um, same thing with LA and being able to get those numbers back up there. All of these slides will be available um, for the presentation, so just letting you know, because I'm, I'm going through these pretty quickly. Um, so profit margins, I mean, as Bugsy mentioned, it's all about profit, and how are we driving those profits to the bottom line? So this is overall look at the US, and we start on the left looking at the GOP margin, as compared to 2019, we're just above, so at 38.9%. Rooms on par, 74.7%. F&B, 30%. Our other is, again, that's one of the areas where we've seen a bump go from 31.9 to 36.3%. And then total departmental profits are up about 1% there. Now digging into, we've looked at the US, luxury hotels. And we look at GOP margin there, um, there's been a greater increase. So we had a 1% increase for the US overall. When we look at luxury hotels, they're up about 3% there. Rooms, again, a slightly higher from 2019 levels. F&B, right on par. Other, 
Um, we're looking at the profit margins just slightly higher at about 3%, and total departmental profit going from 53.7% to 55.8%. So again, being able to harness those revenues, decrease the expenses, and keep flowing that money to the bottom line. So everybody, again, looked at what are those expenses and how can we cut those costs so we can bring, keep more money as we are, continue. And as revenue grows, watching that and seeing how we can keep those costs down and keep that profit flowing to the bottom line. Key labor trends, and again, this is another, I mean, one of the most largest expenses that any hotel has. So we wanted to dig into to labor. We all know housekeeping is a challenge, and when we look at it versus 2019 levels for luxury hotels, up 25% when we talk about housekeeping labor, labor per occupied room. Rooms departmental labor up 16%, and we're seeing a lot of this as contracted labor. We can't find the staff and keep them in-house, so how can we use staffing agencies and bring that in, and it costs a premium there. So how can we compete, and we're talking about versus employees going to Amazon, going to the retailers, and being able to work there where they shifted during COVID, and how can we bring them back in-house? So that's, that's kind of the general story that we're getting, and it is how can, we, how can the hotel industry compete and be able to get them back in? We're looking at um, some hoteliers are saying the, the gig economy, can they schedule their, their uh, shifts on a daily, like every other day and not have like these set shifts on a week? I don't know what the answers are, but I know that there's a lot of companies looking into that. Uh, key labor trends, uh, these are all down. Food and beverage labor is down to minus 4%. Accounting, 11%. Sales and marketing, 3%. And human resources, 8%. Again, we saw a lot of staff get cut during COVID, and there's been efficiencies found, and we're not seeing those pick back up, especially in accounting. We're finding clusters where we have one accounting department overseeing multiple properties and being able to do it that way. Housekeeping labor, here's just a little bit deeper dive in some key markets. So housekeeping labor versus 2019 in Arizona is up 28%. Florida is up 33%. California, 14%, and Texas at 21%. And digging a little bit deeper into those key expense trends, so these are the other expense costs. So when we look on the left, you'll see those that are up. So we've got booking costs or her occupied room are up 11%. So that cost of customer acquisition is a little bit higher than it was in 2019 in getting those guests on the property. Guest supplies, inflationary increases have caused the expenses go up there, so they're up 8%. Utilities, this is a worldwide thing. I've got a separate uh, slide that'll highlight some of those, but up 11% per occupied room. And your property and maintenance up 9%. When we see the decreases, undistributed expenses, when we take out utilities, is down 2%. Admin in general, two per, down 2%, and your sales and marketing down 9%. So again, as the sales and marketing departments ramp back up, when we're seeing CMB go back up, we'll monitor those trends and see if this increases back to the 2019 levels there. Talking about utilities, um, so our company is worldwide. We have offices in the UK. That's where our company is based. So we monitor those levels uh, really closely. Europe, and we have offices in APAC as well. UK, it's a real story on utilities. I mean, ever since um, everything going on in the Ukraine, they've seen a lot of rise in utility costs in the UK and in Europe all um, as well. So you're seeing in the UK, current utilities cost per available room is up to $11.12. In Europe, $9.86, and we're actually seeing a slight decrease here in the U.S. to $7.95 per available room. The margins. So on the next couple of slides, we're going through profit margins. We'll look at some markets. We'll look at some asset classes and some brand scales as well so that you can see the details in there. So this is, again, GOP margin by region, six-month rolling, 2022 versus 2019. You can see Hawaii is up a lot versus 2019. Most are really on par when you're looking at Massachusetts, Texas, Pennsylvania. They're really on par with 2019 levels. The only um, state that's lagging there is California, still slightly behind the 2019 levels. When we're looking at overall United States, and we're looking at by asset class here. So you have your select and limited service that's lagging, the 2019 levels, 43.9% right now. Resorts is up, 
37% for resorts when we look at the margins, 30.6% in 2019. So that's a fantastic trend to see, up 7% there. Extended stay and lagging slightly in the 2019 levels, 46% versus 50%. Luxury, again, is up 33.5% versus 30. And then you have your other full service that's just slightly ahead of 2019 numbers. And then we're looking at brand skills here and digging in a little bit deeper. So we see the ultra luxury, they're far, I mean, they've doubled the profit margins from before when we're versus 2019 versus 2020. And again, looking at cost efficiencies and how those things can be impacted there. Um, so again, finding those cost efficiencies, let's see if those continue as everything continues to ramp back up and get to normal levels. Luxury. Still outperforming there at 34%. You have your upper upscale and upscale properties that are outperforming 2019 numbers. And then you have the upper mid-scale and mid-scale that are trailing. Now, again, when we looked at the profit margins, the profit margins for your extended stay and um, select and limited service are much higher. The same with your upper mid-scale and mid-scale, but again, the returns are much smaller there. So there is um, some handoff there where you're looking at ultra luxury. There's a lot more rolling to the bottom line and being able to bring in th that there. So I've gone through a lot of information very quickly, but we're going to talk about the key takeaways for resorts and luxury, luxury properties. Generally, ADR growth has offset cost inflation, resulting in profit margin increases. So um, that's where we're seeing that, that ADR growth and then being able to adjust the expenses and driving that profit to the bottom line. Expect great growth to slow but not to fall as previously as expected as demand continues to grow. Conference and banqueting is returning a lot quicker than expected, um, as is corporate demand. And we saw that on, on the slide earlier, where conference and banqueting is still lagging. But again, in 2023, we look for that to take off there. Golf and spa revenue performance continues to surge. And those golf resorts are really They've benefited from the COVID, I believe. We've seen those numbers take off. And then again, the 30% growth in total revenue per available room in the ultra luxury class. So that's the end of my presentation. I'm actually going to go back to the previous slide because this is very orange on everybody. <laughs> um, but I appreciate your time and allowing me to come and Bugsy to be here and present the data from Hotstat. Do we have any questions from anybody? A mic yes. to you. You want to come back in? Thanks, Noah here. Uh, that was great, thanks. Um, so towards the end, you were showing how in luxury and ultra luxury, which is sort of the more of the focus here, mm -hmm. uh, how profit margins are way up over 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and then before you had shown some expenses and how that has changed, is there any more detail or context about how expenses are changing more than what you have there? or specifically in luxury and ultra luxury, because that's where you're saying there's a lot mm -hmm. more margin, a lot more flowing to the bottom end, bottom line. Yes, definitely. So our data does track line by line all the information, the P&L, so we can get into like cleaning costs and all those sorts of things. Um, we have seen some savings, and when we look at cleaning supplies as adjusted and those sorts of things, I cannot say right off the top of my head all of that detail in there, but I, if you'd like to reach out to me directly, I can research and give you specific information on that, the line by line and what's impacting that and driving those numbers. Any other questions? Oh, there. Coming to you. Uh, so our customers submit data on a monthly basis, the full P&L or GL data into our system. We have a whole team that maps the information to make sure it's comparable line by line. And again, we get full um, detail based on the uniform system accounts for the lodging industry. So all the revenues, the labor costs, expenses. When we're looking at labor, you've got you know, your front office, housekeeping, concierge, and all of that detailed in there. And um, we do data checks on all the data that we're bringing in on a monthly basis. So thank you. Any other? Oh, it's right here. How do you define ultra luxury? 
Um, so ultra luxury, I can tell you some of the brands that we're looking at within our system. When we look at brand scale, we do it on um, total revenue per available room, and that's how we, we categorize them in there. So like Mandarin Oriental, Peninsula, those types of properties will fall into the ultra luxury. Obviously, we'll have some independence in there depending on what their total revenue per available room is. Can you also put your contact slide back up? Yes. Thank you. Just back to the previous yeah. question on um, it's your membership that's supplying it. Does um, full disclosure, how does it skew? Does it skew luxury? Does it skew East Coast? Does it skew independent brand? So for us, when we look at um, the majority of our, our Data providers are the major brands. So we look at Hyatt, Hilton, Marriott. We have all of their managed portfolios. We work with um, a lot of the third-party operators when we talk about Highgate, Ambridge. And then we also have some independence in the data. So when we look at luxury in the US, we have about just under 400 properties that are reporting into us when we look at the luxury and the resort segments in there. And the major when I was looking at the data, most are in New York, Texas, Florida. We have Colorado and California is really more of the emphasis of where uh, our participants are. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes. Um, thank you. Great information. Thank um, you. you pull a lot of information from a lot of high-end hotels that we all, you know, look at when we're deciding on how to do things in our hotels. Do you have sustainability, diversity, DEI goals, um, things like that that you're using your data to help these clients with? So that's actually something that we're looking at. Um, since we base everything on the uniform systems and the data that we, we receive through there, that is not, has not been a key focus. In the next edition that they're going to be releasing, we're looking at in the near future, that is a big focus in the reporting there. And we are working with some of the key brands to see how they are collecting that data and how can we collect that data from them to be able to aggregate that so you can compare your properties against other properties within our reporting. So it's, it's very much on the horizon. We don't have that data yet, but something that we're very interested in. All right. Thank you. Oh, another question. Hi there, thanks for the presentation, that was amazing. Um, Thank you. Am I mistaken that you don't have any data for Africa? We do, it's just we don't have a lot of properties there. I mean, I would be glad to if you want to reach out to me individually and I can pull the information, but we really focused on the areas where we have a lot of properties, um, but we do have information on Africa. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed being here and appreciate it.